Whenever I mention revised orchestral heart parts, composers always ask about Wagner's magic fire music, and for very good reason. Let's dive into this one. Hi, I'm Danielle from Compose Harp, and I want to help you learn how to compose for the harp with confidence. In today's video, we're going to go through the harp part for Wagner's magic fire music from his opera, Die Valkyrie in Act 3. This is the end of Act 3. There's really two factors to this revision. Number one is the workarounds for the double sharps and flats, and second is the combined part that most harpists perform. So we'll take a quick overview of the part and then discuss the revisions in detail, and then we'll conclude by discussing implications for composers. So the excerpt that we're discussing is the end of Act 3 starting four measures before Rehearsal 97. And this one is a notoriously chromatic passage that has baffled harpists for decades. So the original part is written in E major and is alternating between the two harp parts. And despite being split between two harps, they're still incredibly complex chromatic passages, double sharps, and things that do require revisions. To make matters even worse, harpists often get asked to combine this part um, in performance. This is often due to the orchestra only having access to one harpist. So the revision that I use and that is fairly common is the one by Carlos Salzedo. And this one has some very interesting revisions in addition to combining both the parts. So let's go through and compare them in detail. So in the beginning, the revised heart part starts out in F flat major. And I know this is more of a theoretical key, but the reason for this is because it allows one harp to be able to move through all the key changes or all the chromatic centers without having to change impossible pedals. So it actually works quite well. Let me go ahead and demonstrate. So the benefit of this revision is that it allows the harpist to move from F flat to G flat to A flat rather than E major to G flat to A flat, which would require more pedal changes. So in this revision, the harpist is essentially covering both of the harp parts as written, except the first section is in harmonic, which allows the pedals to move a little bit more fluidly. This revision also works around some of the double sharps right before rehearsal 97, which requires repeating the exact same string and doesn't work quite as well. So this might work at a slower tempo, but not at the full tempo. Now the section right before 98 is almost impossible regardless of how you handle it just because of the sheer number of pedals required. Now when you get to 98, this is where the two heart parts begin to diverge a little bit. They both are playing in 98 except in octaves. So the right hand in harp one is an octave higher than harp two. And then the left hand Harp 1 does ascending arpeggios, whereas the left hand in a harp 2 does descending arpeggios just to provide a little bit more depth. Obviously, this isn't possible when the part is combined into one, so we just do the best that we can here. So that part is just going to be difficult regardless of whether or not it's one harp or two. Now when you get to the E major resolution six measures before rehearsal 99, you're a little bit out of the woods. Um, for the rest of the excerpt, the harmonic rhythm slows down to approximately one harmonic change per measure, so the pedals are far more manageable for the rest of it. 
Now with the revision, harp one is playing everything as written. There's a few parts where the harps are doubled in octaves like we saw before. Um, we just do the best that we can. So in the original part, the first harp will play one measure, the second harp will play the next measure, and so on. Except for a few sections where you want both harps playing for the increased dynamic volume. Now this tends to not work quite so well on harps as it does um, with the same technique used in other instruments. And part of it is just because there's so much extra action required to be able to play each note. And the quicker response time compared to other instruments, it's far more difficult for harps to make this transition seamless. So in reality, the rest of this excerpt does actually work better, played as a combined part rather than two harp parts. In circumstances where two harps are available, then you can take advantage of that to be able to play the octave doublings. <laughs> is number one if you happen to use double sharps or double flats be really aware of them in the heart part make sure you respell them because we can't actually play double sharps or double flats we're having to play them on a different string than originally used which completely changes everything for us including pedals and fingering so be careful of those the second is just to be aware of the pedal complexity this part I would say is not realistic for the harp even though we all play it because we all have to. But there's a couple of things that I want to point out and the first thing is this section at rehearsal 98. The reason it is so difficult is because the right hand is playing one part, the left hand is playing another part, plus we have the pedals and that's going to affect the stability of the harp. So you have, if you have something with this many pedals, you need to have the hands working a little bit more simultaneously. So let me go ahead and demonstrate it again as written. And if you see how much the harp is shifting, that's what is causing the balance issue. to kind of be aware of the layers of complexity that you have in any given section of a piece. The third takeaway is to know your ensemble. So the reason that this part has become so heavily revised is that harpists are so often asked to combine the two parts just because an orchestra might only have access to one harp, not two. Now, this isn't the only orchestral part with two harps. There's many, many of those, um, including Ravel, Daphne and Chloe, W.C. La Mer, um, Holst the Planets, and harpists have also been asked to combine those. However, there ele are elements in those pieces that make it almost impossible, if not completely impossible, to combine. So in a sense, we got lucky with this excerpt because it actually works better as a combined part, but you might not be as lucky. So be aware of your ensemble when you're writing for the harp. Well, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you would like to study the harp score in a little bit more depth, 
I've put together a handout with my annotated scores. To access that, follow the link in the description. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. I have more videos coming your way. Until next time.